Chapter Forty Six. By the skin of my teeth, I arrive back in Montecito in the nick of time. I hated keeping anyone waiting, so I had to really hammer it back, and I did. I got a solid taste of my G class as I hauled some ass along the one hundred one North. Good thing there was no patrol cars on the freeway, and if there were, they certainly didn't see me. I plonked onto the salon chair, finally being able to relax. <sighs> so how's you, honey? Jeremy ran his soft fingers through my long black locks. How's life? Oh, great! I smiled, glancing at his polished self in big Jose Eber salon mirrors. I have to look fierce tonight. Oh, he cooed, raising his eyebrows, beginning to part my luscious silky hair. What's the occasion? A party at Brianna Bersergio's. Oh well, that explains it. He nodded assuredly with big eyes. I'm feeling big hair on top, all swept back. He began animating the big vision with his eloquent hands, and big full curls. Yep, I'm definitely feeling that. And so, for the next two hours, I was in that chair, watching Jeremy get out his little bag of tricks and making some serious magic with my hair. I walked into that salon looking like a hot mess and came out looking like a bitch about her business. I slipped through those Almeida gates just after dark and quickly spotted April's car. <gasps> Damn. She's home. I flew into my quarters, had a hot bath, and then began to get the glam on. I lay my exquisite dress on the bed, pulled my new Manolos out of their box, and set all my makeup on the marble counter in the bathroom next to that ever silent gold iPhone. I was doing a full face of makeup tonight, so I settled for smoky black eyes, kissed with some bright red lips. That I knew would look to die once I had my emeralds on. I slipped my bronze body into that Chloe frock and glanced at myself in the mirror. On point, Bonnie. After a long ass day, I had succeeded. By 7:45 p.m., I was ready to go. I had ordered a town car to come and pick me up, so when I saw it slither up the drive, I grabbed my purse and heels. And crept out the door barefoot into the darkness, and like two shadows in the night, I was almost knocked out by Lydia, who was crossing the garden path just as quickly as I was. <gasps> oh, Lydia! I cried, almost plummeting the heels of my Manolos into her arm. Oh, Jesus! You're like a black ghost. Oh, Miss Bonnie, you scare me! She shrieked, just as shocked as me. Clutching her chest in the dark, oh, you are beautiful. Where you go? To a party, I said. Why are you here now? Ah, I leave my cell phone here from yesterday. Aha.、Uh -huh. What do you need a ride? I offered. Ah, no, no, thank you. Pedro is outside the gate, she said, walking down the drive. Have fun. Chapter forty-seven. Arriving at the doors of Brianna's high society party was interesting. As the car pulled up, there were a swarm of valet guys helping guests out of their assorted vehicles. Good evening, madam. The young valet guy smiled, opening my door. Good evening, I replied, getting out of the car. Thank you. I watched a flurry of guests making their way along the red carpet. Up to the front entrance, flooding into the excited crowds inside Brianna's home. Carefully climbing the sandstone stairway, I gently weaved past the merry faces greeting each other with air kisses and stout hugs. Oh, good evening, madame. A waiter nodded at me beside the doorway, holding a silver tray of champagne flutes. Good evening. I smiled, taking one. I walked into the splendor of the party and glanced at the hundreds of guests mingling in their finest suits and frocks. I knew right then and there that it was going to be impossible to find Brianna. I sipped my champagne 
admiring the beautiful people, and even quickly caught the attention of several male guests nearby. They raised their glasses slightly and courteously nodded their heads. I acknowledged them with a polite smile until I finally lost myself through the crowds. The mellow lounge music drifted throughout the open house, and I glimpsed a DJ on his decks outside on the terrace. And almost every few minutes, I was stopped by a plethora of waiters eagerly offering canapes and sumptuous looking food. I'd be doing my dress and my diamonds a disservice if I got caught stuffing my face when I looked so good. So I happily ignored my empty stomach and settled for champagne. I quickly spotted a few women I recognized from school. Bonnie! I heard my name bellowing from behind. I knew that voice. I quickly spun around and it was Mal Valden standing beside another man. Oh, hi Mal! I waved, admiring his grey suit and black satin scarf. Utter shock was plastered all over his face. Oh, good heavens, Barney, you are breathtaking, he cried, looking at his partner. Your necklace is staggering. <laughs> you are so sweet, Mal, I laughed, kissing him on his flushed, bearded cheeks. Thank you. His face was like, girl be getting diamonds from where? <laughs> girl is strapped up. Have you seen Brianna? I asked. Yes, well, I did see her earlier, talking with uh, Margaret and Randy Lassotte, Mal replied, searching around the crowd. But uh, not for a while now, dear. He touched the arm of the slender man beside him. Let me introduce you to my partner, he smiled, proud as punch. Ray, this is Barney. She works with Marcus and April. I leaned over and kissed his cheeks. Pleasure to meet you, Ray. Likewise, Bonnie. And by the way, you are the best-looking woman at this party tonight. <laughs> oh, stop. I laughed awkwardly. Don't make me blush now. Are you enjoying yourself? Mal asked, holding the stem of his wine glass between his fingers. Yes, it's nice, I smiled. And did you get the email I sent you with Marcus and April's RSVP? Oh, yes, Mal answered quickly. Thank you for that. Glad they can come. I kind of hoping you will too, though. He winked. You look like you could be a lot of fun. <sighs> I probably can be. I smiled cheekily. I'll talk to you gentlemen some more later. I'm heading to the kitchen to find Brianna. Okay, darling. I dodged the party guests coming at me from every direction, combing through the thick crowds on my quest to find Brianna. But what I was really hoping for, however, was that I might, just might, bump into Marcos. <laughs> it was a delicious thought. Instead of finding Brianna, she found me through the sea of faces, waving me down as she stood amongst a group of women on the garden terrace. Brianna looked absolutely stunning, draped in a long, floor-length black frock, and the women surrounding her were equally just as beautiful. All of them, except Oksana, that is. <laughs> of course, I should have known Oksana Engelby wouldn't miss a party like this for the life of her. Here she was on full display, wearing a thigh-riding bright red Hervé Leger bandage dress, her thin neck suffocating within her never-ending cheap-ass diamonds. My diamonds would certainly give hers a run for their money tonight. Drawing toward the women, I noticed their faces were a mixture of bewilderment, friendliness, and confusion. I could feel their intrigue, wondering who in the world was this girl walking toward them with a million-dollar necklace. Meanwhile, I caught Oksana doing a double-take of me, followed with a face of absolute disgust. Oh, Barney, you are so gorgeous, Brianna gushed. Look at you, she said, kissing my cheeks. Thank you so much for coming. I'm so glad you made it. 
Oh, thank you for inviting me, I smiled, hugging her affectionately. Brianna glanced at the group of women. Ladies, this is Bonnie. She works with the Almighty's. That got their attention quick smart. They all greeted me with polite nods and warm smiles. As I struck up a small conversation with Brianna, I felt Oksana staring me down. The whore was feeling me. She didn't want to be, but she was. I knew I was getting under her skin, and she was also wondering where the hell I managed to get my hands on diamonds like this. Oh, I just love your diamonds, Bonnie, she muttered, glancing stiffly at me. I immediately distinguished the sarcasm in her voice. Did you borrow them from April? (sighs) Brianna's startled mouth dropped open, staring at Oksana incredulously, with all the other women shifting awkwardly in their designer shoes. Whore, don't even think about throwing me shade. I glared at that drag queen face of Oksana's. Actually, no, I bought them from Hollywood Boulevard. I replied coolly, taking her words like a duck takes to water. I thought you would have recognized them immediately. I watched the eyes of the other women almost fall out of their heads, hopelessly trying to conceal their smirks. The air grew intense. Oksana's face was burning through her pursing lips. Uh, Well, they're exquisite all the same. Brianna cordially interrupted, squeezing my arm, trying her best to be Mrs. Switzerland. She rubbed the chiffon of my dress between her fingers. Oh, I'm loving this dress. It's Chloe. I smiled at her. Thank you. I bought it in LA today. Is Marcos and April coming? Oksana butted in, trying her best to now be polite. I glared at her face, just wanting to slap her. In your dreams, whore. Uh, no, they're not. Oh, really? Brianna turned to me, looking a little concerned. Why not? Well, um, Marcos is away and April's preparing to go away. Oh, I see. Brianna nodded, suspecting there was more to my words. Uh, we'll pass my regards on to them all the same. I mingled a little more with Brianna and her group of lady friends, all except Oksana, that is, and then floated amongst the crowd getting to know the others. Some folks I knew, some I didn't, but truthfully, my heart wasn't in any of it. All I wanted was to be with Marcos. Marcos loathed these kinds of parties. I could see why now. This was my first introduction to what high society looks like. I studied the hundreds of faces, watching their dramatic airs and graces. What a show. Chapter 48 As the night rolled on, the music got louder and louder, and the show that these well-to-do guests were putting on was now starting to get real. They became drunk and disorderly, beginning to slop around all over the place dancing and faffing about like total morons. (laughs) It was highly entertaining. Now the party started. It took me three hours to get through three champagnes, and I was done. I had to find a bathroom. Gliding through the rowdy crowd of drunken faces, I finally spotted a bathroom, but the door was locked. (sighs) Damn it. I hung around for a good 10 minutes and finally got fed up. As I searched around for another bathroom, I bumped into Brianna, whom at this point was filthy drunk and could barely keep her eyes open. (gasps) Jeez. Honey, I shouted into her ear. Where is there another bathroom? Just off the living room, she slurred, her breath reeking of alcohol. but, But I've tried that one. I shouted back to her as she fell into my shoulder. It's been locked forever! She immediately grabbed my hand and whisked me away through the crowd. You can use mine! Stumbling down a long corridor, passing many late-night faces, 
several of them getting frisky up against the wall, we entered her gorgeous bedroom. Hey, Brianna! Another drunken woman bellowed at the doorway, grabbing Brianna's arm and hugging her aggressively, pulling her away from me. To the right, honey! She pointed, becoming victim to this lady's passionate headlock. I nodded. I crept into the stillness of her bedroom, relieved to get out of that craziness. I walked toward the ensuite bathroom and opened the door, being greeted with a visual I would hardly forget any time soon. Oh, mother of God. Here was Oksana with that red leger dress hitched up around her ass, pressed up against the bathroom counter, being fucked by a young, blonde, brawny waiter. My jaw hit the floor. She hadn't yet seen me through the delicate candlelight, for her face was too deeply buried within the neck of this young Adonis. I stared in shock, listening to her moan loudly, thoroughly enjoying herself with her thighs locked around his torso, as he rammed her hard and fast, rocking her back and forth. It took a lot to surprise me, but this Russian whore had me lost for words. Seconds later, she opened her eyes and spotted me. Not even the Hiroshima bomb could wipe the shock away from her face. I quickly closed the door and shuffled out, on the brink of my bladder bursting. I guess my face was still scarred when Brianna saw me walking toward her. Uh, what's wrong? She said, looking concerned, still within the grip of this lady friend of hers. Did you go already? No, no, I stammered. I, uh, someone's in there. Someone's in there? Brianna quickly snapped. No one should be in there. She pulled away from her lady friend's grasp and staggered toward the bathroom with fervent determination. Don't go in there, I cried, trying to pull her away with her arm. Her drunken face was flummoxed. Why not? I shook my head. Just don't. Suddenly, out stumbled Oksana, pulling at her dress, followed by the young waiter looking hot and sweaty in the face. That whore has got to be dying right now. It was Brianna's turn to be totally blown away. What the fuck were you doing in my bathroom? She demanded angrily, grabbing Oksana's wrist. Sorry, Brianna. Oksana muttered quickly, yanking her wrist away and pushed her way out of the bedroom. Brianna looked as though she was sobering up faster than she wanted. She grabbed the strapping waiter by the bicep. And you can fucking leave this house right fucking now! She gritted through her teeth, ready to slaughter someone. Get the fuck out of here! She turned to me absolutely horrified, falling into my chest and covering her face with her hands. Oh my god, what the fuck just happened? I burst out laughing, wrapping my arms around her. Can you blame her? I said, wiping the hair from her exasperated face. <sighs> the slut of her! Brianna seethed revoltingly, nuzzling her drunken face into my neck. <sighs> I can't go in there, she shook her head. Uh-uh, I mean, she could have gone down to the beach for Christ's sake. I'm not touching that bathroom until Rosa comes here tomorrow. Oh, but I need to pee. I cried painfully. I'm going in. I pulled away from Brianna and snuck into the bathroom, passing that nasty counter. <laughs> oh, yuck. Suddenly, my iPhone buzzed as I flushed. <gasps> I felt my heart melt with relief. <gasps> Marcos! Oh, thank God! I never thought it possible to be so excited from hearing a phone buzz. But with Marcos, it was. The screen lit up the dimly lit room. Are you enjoying yourself? I smiled, sitting on the toilet lid, texting him. No. 
The phone vibrated seconds later. Why not? My fingers fumbled over the screen. Because you're not here. I washed my hands, avoiding everything but the running water. The iPhone buzzed again. Are you ready to leave? <gasps> what the hell? What does he mean by that? My fingers glided over the screen. Yes. I fixed my red lipstick. The screen lit up again. Then come out onto the street. <gasps> I died. My bewildered eyes reread the text message over. You're here? No answer. I quickly opened the bathroom door and scampered through Brianna's bedroom and clanked down the corridor. I quickly spotted Brianna in the living room, dancing with her husband, Dean. I glanced at her for a quick minute. Tell her I'm leaving? No, she'll ask why. Turning on my heel, I walked out the front door, down the stairs, and said goodbye to the staff lining the red carpet. Ah, oh, your car, madame? An enthusiastic valet guy came up to me as I walked onto the street. Oh, uh, no thank you, I smiled, peering up the right side of the dark street, getting layered within the sea fog drifting over the swamp. No Marcos. I peered down the left side, and a little way down the road, alongside several parked cars, I glimpsed Marcos's black Bentley, lingering amongst the dark shadows with its red brake lights glowing. My heart abruptly shattered into a thousand pieces on that concrete. Chapter 49 Staggering along the street as my Manolos crunched on the road, I came up alongside that sleek Bentley and opened the door. And there sat that stunningly beautiful man, glancing back at me, those dark, enigmatic eyes with his black hair swept back, his black collared shirt with a few buttons undone, like they always were, revealing that deliciously tanned chest. I was mad for him. Hello, I smile, my insides melting down my legs. Hello, he murmured quietly, flashing me those disarming dimples amongst that flawless smile. I got in and shut the door, quickly becoming engulfed within some soft tunes, filling the cabin of his car. Without saying a word, he placed an affectionate hand on my thigh, giving it a gentle rub as those haunting dark eyes fell over my body, observing me delicately. His hand eventually slid up the side of my body outlining my waist, the curve of my left breast, the length of my collarbone, until it squeezed the nape of my neck gently. His touch had my bones shudder. Oh, you're exquisite, he quietly spoke, taking my hand and kissing it softly, those fiery eyes dancing within the light of the car dash. Thank you. I was aching for his lips. Why hadn't he kissed me? What are you doing to me, Marcos? I was dying, truly. A million thoughts were spiraling through my crazy brain. He drove off heading down that shadowy beach road, eventually turning onto the 101. I realized soon enough, as we sped along that lonesome freeway, that we weren't going home. A bemused smirk fell over my red lips. So, where are we going, Marcos? Hmm, somewhere? He smiled evasively, watching the road. <laughs> I chuckled quietly. Well, wherever we're going, I said, watching the Cabrillo exit shine in front of us. There's nowhere else I'd rather be. We simultaneously glanced at each other as those white lines on the road became a blur. We took the La Cumbre exit and began crawling up Las Palmas Drive in silence. How was the party? That deep, saucy voice filled the cabin. Oh, it was fine, 
I replied. Although I don't think I'll ever look at Oksana the same way again. Marcos turned to me curiously. Why not? I opened the door on her fucking a waiter in Brianna's bathroom. He raised his eyebrows laughing. <laughs> don't tell me you're surprised. <laughs> not even slightly. I smirked, glancing ahead, the palm trees alongside the road, flying past us. Although at one point through the night, she did look like she was going to jack my diamonds. Did you tell her I gave them to you? Marcus asked, like he loved the risk of it all. <laughs> no, I said flatly, glaring at him with dubious eyes. You should have, he grinned, his eyes peeled ahead. We exchanged another glance. <sighs> I sighed, completely beset by this human being. He took my hand in his, putting it on his lap, and stroked it softly. How was dinner with Dale? He asked, his soft Spanish accent slipping through his words. <sighs> oh, I love Dale, I smiled. She's a lot of fun. I feel like I could tell her anything. Marcus frowned a brow. Anything? Well, obviously not everything, I quickly said. Silence. I wouldn't care even if you did tell her everything, Marcus remarked, glancing at me as we wound around those Hope Ranch hills, turning onto Roble Drive. <laughs> Don't play with me, Marcos. Really? I squeezed his warm hand. He turned to me with those dark, passionate eyes. I'm so in love with you, Bonnie de Haro, he whispered, rubbing my hand affectionately. I almost choked. My eyes welled with salted tears hearing those divine words. And I used all the force I had to stop them from gushing down my face and ruining my makeup but it was no use. Marcus watched my face drowning. Are you happy or sad? He wondered with fascination. Happy, I whispered, barely able to squeeze the words out of my mouth, the tears falling uncontrollably. More than you could imagine. Touched, Marcus reached over and wiped my tears with his thumb and kissed my hand. One more time.